thoughts here as far as a turnaround with so many new faces as far as assistant coaches go. He certainly is a, a candidate for the ACC Coach of the Year. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast. Georgia Tech won the coin toss. They defer to the second half. As Austin Kent puts toe to leather, and we are underway in Raleigh. Bam Knight from his two to the 20. Still on his feet before finally being brought down at about the 27-yard line, which is how long that return was. So an opportunity to see not only Bam Knight, but Ricky Person, this one-two combo at running back for NC State, and Bailey Hockman that we talked about at the top of the show. Yeah, and, and Bailey Hockman's a guy, he's going to be really run this entire offense. Some people call him a game manager, but when you watch him throw the ball downfield, he has so much confidence in his wide receivers. Look for a lot of those 50-50 deep balls to turn into more 80-20 with his tall wideouts. Hockman, the fake to person. Oh, big hit, and his receiver hung on to the football. Wanye Thomas came up to five. deliver the blow, and there Thomas was able to hang on. Yeah, look at the completion percentage. Over 60% is great. It was fantastic Every last week. 74% completions last week. And, you know, Bailey Alkman's a guy that you know, might not be a household name, but he has done nothing but produce for this NC State offense. Wanye Thomas, the man who made the hit on that play, is down. That's the last thing. Georgia Nye Thomas. First down on that first play. Bailey Hawkman now rolling out, getting pressure on the edge, and just has to throw this one away. True freshman Jared Ivey on the pressure there. Let's take a look at the injury. <laughs> yeah, right there. It looks like that head just pinned against the nerve a little bit. That left arm might have gone a little numb, but done a strict test on the sideline with the, the training staff. Looks to be okay. I expect to see him back in this game. He is back already in on this play. Second down and 10. Hawkman, they give the person in the backfield, brought down. David Curry from that middle linebacker spot making the TFL. David Curry's a guy you're gonna we're gonna call his name a lot, a lot today. David Curry is a guy that when we talked to Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator, he said, "Look, man, you know, he's not gonna be the most impressive body guy, but he is almost 100% on his reads, and he makes tackles in the backfield just like that, setting him a big third and 13 for NC State on this opening drive." Curry in his sixth year here at Georgia Tech, son of former Atlanta Falcon buddy Curry. The leader on this team, now third and 13. Tech brings pressure. Hockman flushed out of the pocket. He's just going to have to throw it away. So as E. Wood talked about in the open, Georgia Tech severely depleted on defense coming into this game, forcing NC State to punt on their first offensive possession. Yeah, and good third down call. And it's, again, number six, David Curry applying the pressure directly up the middle. Made a really good move on Joe Sculthrope, the center, and right in Bailey Hockman's face. Uh, with all those guys out, Chris, I mean, just to be able to go th force a three and out on the opening drive, I mean, it's going to be a lot of confidence built for this Georgia Tech offense as they take the field. Trenton Gill back to punt for the Wolfpack. Punt received by Blancado, and he was hit immediately by that Wolfpack coverage team. Oh, and Blancado's lucky. No fair catch called. Good play by the cover man coming downfield. Kept his head out of it, just wrapped up the body. That's, that's one that is going to be on the uh, teach tape for, kick, for punt coverage. Don't hit him with your head when he ducks. Good job with that one. And look at Jeff Sims. Jeff Sims is a guy, true freshman, coming into this team. Yellow Jackets have desperately needed a quarterback for a long time, trying to come out of that triple option offense, and Jeff Sims seems to be that guy. Tried to get it quickly to a tight end, Dylan Devaney, and pass goes wanting. I mean, just, you know, Jeff Sims' pr production, you know, he can do it on the ground, but through the air is what impresses me. When he does not throw the ball to the other team, he is very successful. You know, three touchdowns last week, did have an interception, but also his biggest game running the ball on the ground with over 100 yards. Let's see how productive he is with the ball in his hand in this game. Jordan Mason nowhere to go. Tyler Baker Williams from that nickelback spot there to bring Mason down and much like NC State in their first offensive possession tech now facing a third and long. Yeah, and, and third and longs are, are different for this Jeff Collins offense. Jeff Collins is a defensive coach. He relies on his defense. He said, look, 
our third down play will dictate if we go for it on fourth down. This could possibly be a, a, a run play if they decide to go for it on fourth. NC State brings five. Sims hits his receiver out near the 40. That's Jalen Camp. And well, that'll be enough for a first down. For 15 wide on the coverage. Yeah, Jalen Camp, a fifth-year senior, bigger target, 6'2", 220 on the outside. And this NC State defense, they, they play man coverage, but they back off the corners usually. See the top of the screen, the cornerback walked off. When we talked to Dave Padno, he said, we're just going to throw it out there to a wide receiver pick up five or six. This is exactly what Sims wants to do on this play. That time, you had the nickel back and Baker Williams coming up to defend Malachi Carter incomplete. Yeah, Malachi Carter was open. Jeff Sims double clutched right here. He needs to throw the ball right when Malachi Carter's coming out of his break. Doesn't allow the flat Tyler Baker Williams to, to go out there. That's a timing thing. He needs to learn. Give to Mason. Has a big hole. Gets into that second level. It'll bring up third and short for the Jackets. Yeah, Tanner Ingle on the stop. I was going to say, barely third and short. Thanks to T T Tanner Ingle. He is one of my favorite guys to watch on, on any defense. I mean, he is a guy that when we talked to we talked to Coach Tony Gibson, he said he is like a car wreck every single time he gets that. on the field. Like he's 70 gonna hit car somebody. wrecks a game for every <laughs> snap. That's unbelievable. And he's not even that big. He's 5'10", 182 pounds. Mason in the backfield. He's going to get brought down. Tech will not be able to convert this third down. Peyton Wilson, the emotional leader, leading tackler on this defense, making the stop. Well, not only leader tackling, leading tackler on this defense, he's leading the ACC in tackles per contest. And those two guys that just made the last two plays, Tanner Engel and Peyton Wilson, are phenomenal players. We'll have to keep an eye on Peyton, Wil Peyton Wilson's left shoulder. It looks like he's holding it kind of gingerly, but those two guys lead this Wolfpack defense. Presley Harvin back for the Jackets, one of the top punters in the country, and that's exactly why right there. Another inside the 20 as Thayer Thomas makes the catch. NC State with their second offensive possession when we come back. Still scoreless here in Raleigh. This team loose and keep them uh, you know, away from the grind without having a game to kind of get rid of some of that angst. <laughs> yeah, and listen to him talk about the kickball. They also play dodgeball. I mean, he was fired up. He used the word ridiculous to describe those <laughs> events probably six or seven times in our conversation. They were ridiculous, and I just absolutely loved it. Whoa, this is he ridiculous, too. He hit the pass play out in the flat. That Whoa, was a ridiculous hit by Zamari Walton. Complete, complete, forward pass. Forward pass. Second down. Second down. See, this is backwards. It looks like it did travel forward. But good hit. I mean, just understanding the, the, the setup. Emeka Amezi is up, and there Thomas is back. That looks like screen. It's a way to read it and attack it. Look for maybe a, a smoke screen and get someone to go downfield off of that later in the game. Hockman content to really air it out early on in this game, going down the sideline. Incomplete is... Keenan Johnson was there in coverage on Devin Carter. Georgia Tech what? secondary without Avery Shoel, who did, entered the transfer portal earlier this week, and Trey Swilling, who's unavailable for this game, along with Caleb Oliver, one of their nickelbacks, they've come out to play. <laughs> they have, and let's see if they bring pressure again. See David Curry walked up in the line of scrimmage, showing pressure. Let's see if they bring it or they drop back out. They drop out, come with just four. Hockman has time, now he's flushed. Goes downfield, incomplete. Georgia Tech forces a, th a three and out to Reed Carpenter on coverage on Thomas, and NC State will have to punt from deep inside their own territory. Well, how about that? Back-to-back -back three and outs to open this game for the Georgia Tech defense. Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator, had to have been pulling his hair out this morning, getting the COVID results or just whoever's not active results, whatever you want to call them this year. But all these different guys, defensive ends out, safeties out, cornerbacks out, and this defense is really stepped up. Guys who weren't used to playing, they're playing now, and it's, it's paying off early in this game. Trenton Gill from the yard inside his own end zone. Josh Blancato. 
with the fair catch at his own 38. Good punt from Gill, Georgia Tech. We'll take over from that spot. We'll have a women's basketball doubleheader Thursday night right here on the ACC Network. Wake Forest hosts 3-0 North Carolina and Winston-Salem at 6 Eastern. Then 22nd ranked Syracuse goes down to Miami. You think they're upset about that trip this time of year? Hmm. To take on the 2-0 Hurricanes. You see that on your schedule. You're in Syracuse, New York. Like, mm, a December trip to Miami. This will work out nicely. You almost kind of wish it was a January trip to Miami, though. Sims with time. Now it breaks down. Now he's down. Tries to throw it and does get rid of it. The ball is on the turf. The officials are going to come in now and call it incomplete. Yeah, I think it should be incomplete. It was, he was throwing the ball, but... So we, we had questions about Peyton Wilson after that last hit, whether his shoulder was okay. It looks like it's okay. Peyton Wilson, number 11 at the top of your screen. He was in a little bit of a, a delayed blitz and saw an opening and, I mean, he dipped and leaned and great job getting to the quarterback. This, I mean, Peyton Wilson, 98 tackles on the season, 10.8 tackles a game. The previous play is under Fantastic player. As we hear from our referee, Riley Johnson, first time today, he's going to check in with Jack McElwee, our replay official, to see whether Sims' knee was down before he got rid of the football. We'll tell you what they come up with when we come back. Welcome back to Raleigh. While we were away, replay official Jack McElwee determined that this call needed to be overturned. Not an incomplete pass as it was called on the field, but a sack. Take out, check out the knee of Sims. That right knee did touch the ground, and Wilson will get credit for a sack. So second down and long, and Mason trying to make some hay, and does initially break the first tackle, and picked up a chunk of that lost yardage. Big ol' Ali McNeil from that nose tackle spot making the tackle. Yeah, and it's gonna set up a third down, and third down and long for this Wolfpack, or for sorry for this Georgia Tech offense, and it's just not the position that they want to get into. I mean, really, their go-to guy right now, Malachi Carter, the six-three wide receiver at the top of your screen. He does a cut split, look for him to possibly come across the field down below, but it's going to be in Jeff Sims' hands. Pack bringing just three, so Sims has time. Ball dislodged from Malachi Carter. Nice job defensively by Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas, two linebackers in coverage. And that's going to be the that's going to be the development, the kind of the next step in this Georgia Tech offense. Right now, these wide receivers, this offensive line, everybody is just a year removed from the triple option style offense. It, it, you know, if I'm able to sit, kind of sit at my home in Connecticut and, and understand what that route is going to be, you know the Wolfpack defense does too. So hiding plays like that, that's going to be the next step as this Dave Patnode offense progresses next year. Presley Harvin. Puts that big right foot into it. The give the person on the outside. He's got nowhere to go. Strung out and dropped for a loss. Yeah, great job by the defense right there. And Mike Lockhart, number 94, good job of setting the edge, right? Usually you talk about the edge of the defense being all the way on the outside, but when Mike Lockhart's able to extend his arm and penetrate up the field, it makes the ball carrier bounce deep and wide and allows the rest of the def defenders to get there. I mean, really impressed so far with this Georgia Tech defense on these first three opening drives. Second and 12 for Hawkman as he directs traffic. Jackets bring just four, so Hawkman has time, and he has a receiver for a first down. That was a strike to C.J. Riley. Yeah, we're talking about size of receivers. Well, C.J. Riley is 6'4", 220 on his own. And this is a good job using his body. You see it a lot of tight ends in the NFL where they just run a little quick stop route, but Billy Hawkins was able to throw it away from the defender. Good pickup for the first down. Hawkman took the low snap. Got it to his back, was able to pick up a good five yards. Ricky Person, the junior from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Person and Bam Knight formed this one-two combo for NC State. Haven't seen Knight at the tailback spot. It's been primarily Person. Quickly outside. That's Porter Rooks, a true freshman. He's going to be close to when he gains another first down. 
Yeah, Porter Rooks is a guy they're excited about. He's a little bit smaller than the rest of the wide receivers, but they use him on reverses and different things of that nature. But he also lines up in a lot of these four wide receiver sets. You see Angeline in the slot to the top of your screen. Let's see if they go his way with no one covering him. Hockman quickly into the flat. Taking what the defense gives him again to Porter Rooks. Gain of about six on the play. And NC State wants to go Temple. One thing that Georgia Tech does, and Andrew Thacker, their defensive coordinator, man, they rotate a lot of players in. And we talked with NC State earlier in the week, and Tim Beck, their OC, and he said, if we can go Temple and prevent that type of substitution, it's what they're going to try and do. And they were able to do that successfully on those last couple of plays. Another injury here for Georgia Tech, Antoine Owens on the defensive all right, thanks, Jordan. Notre Dame wrapping up a spot earlier this week just because of the scheduling with the ACC in that ACC championship game. Clemson playing tonight, as is Miami right here on the ACC network. A loss by Miami or a Clemson win would wrap up a spot for the Tigers in that ACC championship game on the 19th as well. And good news for Yellow Jackets fans. Looks like Owens was given a bottle of water and stretched out. That leads me to believe it was just a cramp. And so uh, he's walking off the field. But Chris, you know, you're right. They cannot afford to lose anybody else at that defensive end position. They only have four guys right now that can go, and two of them are true freshmen. So, you know, they are thin at that position. If you're just joining us, Georgia Tech announced before the game 10 players unavailable for today's game. In addition to guys like Sims who are out with injuries, so they are depleted on both sides of the football. Coming up to at least slow down the ball carrier was Tariq Carpenter. And Person was able to keep his feet and gain maybe a yard on the play before Quez Jackson finally brought him down. Person loses a shoe. one yard. And it really, it's kind of like they're playing with seven linebackers on the field. I mean, Tariq Carpenter, he's 6'4", 230. I mean, all these guys in this Georgia Tech defense, they have recruited size and length. Uh, and it's interesting, guys like Tariq Carpenter, you know, he may very well find himself playing linebacker at the next level with that size. Third and five, Hockman downfield, has a receiver and a first down. That's a Mezzi finally getting involved in the offense with his first catch of the night. We talked about Mezzi running some downfield outbreaking routes and I mean, he, he is such a big body. So often it looks like he's pushing off of defenders because he's just, you know, using his body. But he's so strong and so big and has really developed over this past offseason. And he's making these 50-50 balls look like 80-20 balls when they're in the air. Man, Tariq Carpenter. He's down for Georgia Tech while the staff looks at him. Let me remind you, coming up next, I just mentioned that dual threat quarterback, Dariq King in number 10 Miami in a must-win situation for the Hurricanes if they want to somehow find their way into that AC. The first play from scrimmage tonight, he came back after a shoulder injury. Carpenter looked like he was maybe grabbing a hamstring. Already without, as I mentioned, Avery Shoel, who entered the transfer portal earlier this week from that safety spot. Trey Swilling not available, starting cornerback in this game. We'll see if Hockman can exploit it. Bam Knight spins his way, still on his feet. Give him about six yards. Wesley Walker brings him down. Yeah, and it's interesting. Andrew Thacker, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, he's he does not want his his, his cover guys covering for too long. He's sending a lot of cornerback pressures, safety pressures, trying to get the ball out of Hawkman's hands. Knight eludes a tackler, picks up a first down. A good run on second down, so we saw a lot of Ricky Person. He lost his shoe on a tackle earlier on in this drive. No problem for Tim Beck, just put in Bam Knight. Fake tonight. Hockman has pressure up the middle. He's going to go down. Kyle Kennard, one of those true freshman defensive ends with the sack right up the middle. Oh, they're excited about him. Watch 31 on the left side of your screen. He just coming. He said, wow, there's a huge gap right here. I might as well rush the quarterback. It looks like he was dropping into a little bit of a spy zone. But good trigger and to get downfield and... I mean, it's guys like that that, you know, there's injuries all over the place for Georgia Tech defensively, but then true freshmen like Kyle Kennard, 6'5", 240 out of Atlanta, and there he's another guy 
Yeah, it looks like Griffin. Yeah, Jaquan Griffin, another one of those interior defensive linemen. Georgia Tech is playing a lot of players, but Eric Wood down on the sideline, I mean, they don't have, they're going to run out of players here soon enough. They are, and the longer these drives go for NC State, the tougher it's going to be on Georgia Tech because they're so used to rotating guys. These guys don't normally play more than three or four plays at a time. NC State's first drive of the game was only four plays, and they were extremely effective. The next one was a three and out. This drive, as it has gone on and on, it gets tougher and tougher, and that's where it becomes so huge when you get a true freshman like number 31, Kyle Kennard, to get a sack on the last play to force him into this second and extremely long. There's Griffin, the sophomore from Rome, Georgia, walking off under his own power. This is a 10 play drive for NC State. So this is the, the, by far their most effective and efficient drive offensively here in this early going. Yeah, Eric mentioned the length of the drive. You, you just said 10 plays, but what you're also seeing is NC State is going fast. And what that does is, you know, it forces Georgia Tech to keep the same guys on the field. They can't sub, but it also forces these defensive linemen to get back in their stance faster and can't catch their breath. And yeah, that's tactical. That's tactical by Tim Beck on this NC State offense. Tech bringing pressure again on second down and 20. Hockman is able to find his tight end Angeline in the flat to pick up a big chunk of that 20 yards back. Kerry Angeline's a guy who's really stood out this year for the Wolf Pack. I mean, he's 6'7 target. He's been you know, so good in the red zone, and you see him lined up in that kind of near slot position at the top of your screen. They love him out of that position working against safeties and linebackers. Hockman in the end zone. Incomplete, defended nicely. Rooks wanted to get a flag. No flag thrown. Wesley Walker, redshirt freshman on the defensive Rooks over the middle. Mm, great play on the back end. Number 32, it's Wesley Walker, as you mentioned. And he's a guy, you know, third on the depth chart, third on above the line. That's what kind of what Georgia Tech calls it. But you see him right now on field goal block team. He's kind of doing a little bit of everything with the limited personnel that Georgia Tech has, but good play to prevent a touchdown. Christopher Dunn from 40 yards out for the first score of the game right through the uprights. One of the more accomplished kickers in NC State history, and that's saying something. With the first three points of the game, NC State up 3 to nothing here over Georgia Tech with 519 left to go in the first quarter. So with all the injuries, Mark, and everything going on with this Georgia Tech defense, they bend, but they don't break on this drive. And all things considered, at 519, to be down just three, they've kind of weathered the storm here early on, if you will, defensively. And now maybe Coach Collins can kind of get the charges up and, and have them feeling confident about the way they've played so far. <laughs> I want to know the chatter that's going on in Coach Collins' headset right now. You, I mean, you got to know that the coordinators, the position coach, everyone's talking to him and be like, we're down this guy, we're down this guy, this guy's back. And, I mean, for a head coach, anytime that you have a season like 2020, it becomes hard to manage your team. But anytime you also have injuries on top of that in the game, just limited your game plan. I mean, it just becomes so difficult to coach a winning team. And you're right, to only have three points points on the board right now for the Georgia Tech defense. That is a win so far in this game. Dante Smith to receive the kick. Fair catch. Georgia Tech will take over from their 25. Get the latest news and information from around the ACC every weekday morning at 7 a.m. Packer and Durham. They'll also have special guests from around the world of sports. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Jeff Sims back on the field for the Yellow Jackets. This true freshman quarterback from Jacksonville, Florida, getting better and better every week. Fumble. And NC State, the player can't even believe it because it looked like Drake Thomas was going to fall right on top of it and just he just dove over the football and Georgia Tech retains possession. Gosh, watch 32, Devin Betty just, the ball's right there, goes right between his legs and somehow, somehow winds up in Dante Smith's hands. I mean, it just, <laughs> that's Thomas, right? It, it disappeared for a second. Where'd it go? Sims 
Willie Tuck and run, but he won't go very far. And the ball is on the ground again. And the officials are going to rule that Sims was down. Ball security has been an issue all year long for Georgia Tech, and it certainly has been in the first two plays of this drive. We do have a flag on the play. Let's check the laundry. There's definitely some pushing around the pile. You wonder if, you know, maybe punch was thrown or something, but yeah, that came, that flag came late. Right as everybody scrambled around the pile. It is. It's going to be a dead ball personal foul against Georgia Tech. That's our first flag of the game. Correction. Correction. They're offsetting fouls. Personal foul. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense, the down counts. It'll be third down. Well, there you have it. It's, Chris, don't you think sometimes if you get unnecessary roughness against you, then it's necessary to rough back? <laughs> I feel like sometimes you have offsetting unnecessary roughness. The second one might be necessary. It's a judgment <laughs> call as to how necessary yeah. that second roughness was. Yep, yep, yep. But anyways, it's like that down didn't happen, so good for Jeff Sims. Is after the play, so it's third and 12th. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. And Sims is now going to have to make it up on his own, which he might do. Can he get to the outside? He does. Well, that's the improvisational skill right there that Jeff Sims brings to the table. When everything broke down, he was able to go 14 yards and pick up the first. Yeah, and you see NC State brings pressure. A really good pickup by number 28, Dante Smith, the running back. And pushing his defender by the quarterback, Jeff Sims had an open lane, took advantage of it. <laughs> I mean, you're right. That, that's kind of the extra that he brings to the table. Now pressure up the middle. He'll be dropped. Drake Thomas couldn't pick up the fumble that was right in front of him a couple of plays ago. But he picked up the quarterback that was right in front of him on this play. Well, it's just, it really just seems like this Georgia Tech offensive line, they can block well for about a second and a half. But what this NC State defense is doing right now, they're saying, okay, if you keep the running back in to block, our man player on the running back is going to add blitz. And that's been Thomas on the last couple plays, and they've gotten to the quarterback really a, a lot, of, pretty much every down on this drive. Draw to Smith. Bounces off one tackle, picks up about four or five. Eric, you were talking a lot about this offensive line and the transition from the option a couple of years ago and the job that Brent Key has done just to get them to where they are. We'll check in with Eric Wood in a little bit. He was talking about that, though. I will back you up on that, Chris. Even Thanks. Though he kid, he, yeah, he, he was talking about <laughs> He wasn't about talking that. now. He was, earlier, he was talking about it. <laughs> yes. Big third down for Georgia Tech. Sims flushed again. Breaks containment again near midfield. Gets a block and now goes down at the 45-yard line. Flag on the play. Let's see if this one comes back. Offensive holding, number 73, 10-yard penalty, third down. The veteran, Zach Quinney, guilty of the hold. And Quinney's been a really good player for this Georgia Tech offensive line. I mean, the task that he had to have. I mean, he was playing in this triple option offensive line set where you're lean. I mean, he's like 250 pounds at 6'6". I, mean, that, that's, I mean, that's like LeBron, you can dunk with that. And then he had to gain 50 pounds over the offseason because he wanted to keep and maintain his spot. He did that and, you know, that play aside, he's been really effective and a good blocker for this Georgia Tech offense, but now sets up third and forever for Georgia Tech. 22 to be exact. They're going to lose yardage on third and 22 as Dante Smith just tried to pick up what he can, what he could, uh, as Jamias Griffin, rather, and they'll bring up fourth down. Jeff. Jeff Collins told us a hilarious story about Zach Quinney. Before he ever met him in the facility, he met him at a Waffle House. Zach Quinney was eating an egg white omelet, and this was during the weight gain process. 
because he saw him with that egg white omelet and he wasn't getting big enough fast enough. Now in their O-line handbook, they have one rule, no egg white omelets. <laughs> Returnable punt here from the Wolfpack. And that's Thomas, who gets really good return on it. So NC State, after a 52-yard drive on their last offensive possession, now are set up in good field position here. There, Thomas coming off one of his best games with three touchdowns receiving last week. Dynamic in the return game as well. Setting up great field position for his Wolfpack offense. And, you know, I think Eric... Eric just told that story. I think it's so funny. Yo, where else are you going to meet an offensive lineman who's trying to gain weight? But Waffle House. But the fact that he was at Waffle House wasn't enough. He was at Waffle House eating an egg white, Can't no fat it. omelet. That is not what Chris Cotter would order if he went, no, went to Waffle House. No, the rules are scattered, smothered, covered, <laughs> chunks. Waffle House in, the, in those hash browns the whole way. Hockman rolling out. Receiver covered, but a nice catch in traffic. That time by Devin Carter. Really good play fake on this outside boot. And look at this. I mean, so you know, it looks a little bit different. Bailey Hawkins, a lefty quarterback, rolling out on that boot to his left-hand side. Strong hands by Devin Ca Carter. And you know, this run, run, and boot deep ball has been really effective. Person. Brought down after a gain of three. You know, it's funny, Chris. These, these two running backs that NC State has, neither of them are going to be in the top 10 or, or top 15 of running back carries or yardage, but combined, combined, they're right up there. I mean, these guys combined for 127 yards per game on the ground, and sometimes it's one or sometimes it's the other, but usually both of them are very effective throughout a game. Both highly recruited at a high school. Persons had some injuries at NC State here on the receiving end. Makes a player miss into the red zone before being pushed out of bounds by Jared Ivey. Well set up screen. Understood that it was a little bit of a man-to-man -man coverage by Georgia Tech. Got the back out there and just too far for the inside linebackers to run to get there. But they're going fast again at the end of this quarter. And they won't get the playoff before the quarter ends. NC That's State now. Ball. Here on the ACC Network. Presented by Dr. Pepper. Look at Person on the left side. Inside the 10. Will he get to the end zone? Inside the pylon. Touchdown, NC State. Well, that's a way to start the quarter off. Just hand the ball to your big running back, Ricky Persons, around the left side. Really good block by Akeem Icky. The new uh, absolutely fantastic job sealing the edge. And Ricky Persons dives in. Ball crosses the goal line, bounces off the turf, and soars away like Superman. Fantastic run and great blocking up front by this NC State offensive line. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Person. Done on now for the PAT, and you get a feeling that NC State is starting to feel themselves after a couple of drives. One four plays, the next three plays, and since then they've had two scoring drives, and this touchdown run by Ricky Person just starting to physically get the better of Georgia Tech here early on in Raleigh. Yeah, especially on that last touchdown run, I mean, you, know, you have NC State's top offensive lineman, and Akeem Ikwanu against a backup or third string defensive end. I mean, that's how you get the edge of these defenses and look for a lot more of these outside stretch runs by this NC State offense. I'm, I just, I can picture it now. It's just gonna be stretch, stretch, bootleg off the stretch, shot downfield. And I think that's the way this game is gonna go for NC State. Four plays, 45 yards, just a minute and 32 off the clock, and Person finishing it off with a 20-yard run, all set up by a good punt return from Thayer Thomas. That's Dante Smith to receive this Christopher Dunn kick. Gets Trenton Gill kicking off of the Wolfpack. Smith to let this one go over his head. Georgia Tech will take over at the 25. Wolfpack's done it offensively these last couple of drives and then on the defensive end here, Mark. 
Yeah, and they have. And, you know, we haven't called this guy's name a lot of times, but Lee McNeil, big number 29 in the middle, is allowing a lot of these balls, these ball carriers, to bounce to the outside. And Peyton Wilson, Isaiah Moore, Drake Thomas, all these guys are making good plays on the ball. And, I mean, just really, really excellent job by this Wolfpack. And Tony Gibson is calling a fantastic game, understanding the limitations that this Georgia Tech offense has, especially without their top playmaker, Jameer Gibbs, at running back. Four TFLs, including two sacks for NC State. Fresh up the middle again. Gibbs, or Sims rather, gets away from it. Behind his receiver. Yeah. <laughs> we just talked about number 29, Lee McNeil, big guy up front. Really good job on the guard. Just pushing him, pulling him back, getting around him, and forcing the quarterback off the spot. But, you know, Lee McNeil, he's a guy, he was a linebacker in high school. Now he's 6'3", 300 pounds. He was not a 300-pound linebacker, but he was about like 250 and he's playing running back and linebacker. And we talked to some of his teammates that, you know, he is not only strong, but he is one of the best defenders in college football because of his athleticism. Mason picking up four yards this morning on Twitter. Lee McNeil announcing that this would be his final year here at NC State. He was going to test the NFL waters afterward. And so many players this year opting out in midseason or here as we get towards the latter part of the year. McNeil saying, I'm going to play the rest of the year with my mates, including this game, final game of the regular season for NC State, and then potentially a bowl game down the road. Sims trying to get the first down on his own, and he does. He's just been a one-man show for this Georgia Tech offense, running the football and trying to make things happen on third down. He has, and, you know, honestly, yeah, I was trying to watch that play down the field. I want to see how much his wide receivers were working for him, and quite honestly, after they hit their fifth or sixth step and the ball hadn't come to them, they pretty much stopped. I mean, there, there's nowhere for him to throw the ball, not necessarily because the defense is playing so well. The wide receivers are kind of quitting on these routes. So, Jeff Sims has to do it himself. Mason toward midfield. Jakeen Harris brings him down, but not until a big run from Jordan Mason, who's been banged up much of the year. He's finally healthy now, and Georgia Tech certainly needs him with Jameer Gibbs out. Yeah, that's senior nice. captain Isaiah Moore. Richard Jr., I'm sorry. Fantastic middle linebacker. He calls the plays for this defense. He hopped up relatively quickly, so hopefully he's all right, but... You know, we talk about this NC State defense. The, when you game plan against them, you almost throw out your inside run plays because of Lee McNeil on the inside and then Isaiah Moore right behind him. Both of these guys can not only cause disruption, but make big tackle for losses. And so all the run game that, that really is successful versus this NC State team is outside. It's bootleg, it's trickeration, it's screen plays because they are so stout up that middle. Again, to give the Mason on the outside. Nice cutback. Picks up nine on first down. Yeah, and Jordan Mason, he, he might not be the starter, but he's no slouch at all. Fantastic year last year, a couple good games this year. But he's a guy that once he gets pointed downhill, can really be disruptive. We, I just called him Jordan. His, all his friends, teammates call him JP, JP Mason on that run. Big hole again for Mason. Now Tech's picking up chunks in this run game. And, and watch his shoulder pad level. When it comes to the contact point, he dips down. And he, and he provides the, a low surface area for defenders to tackle him. All you can tackle are his legs, and he's got big, powerful legs. He was hurt, now healthy this year, and getting a lot more carries in this game with Gibbs out. Sims with the pump fake going deep. Incomplete. Tried to hit Adonica Sanders into double coverage. You know, that's a it's an ill-advised throw. Just you know, you got deep third corner and no one threatening the middle of the field. So you got two guys over there. This ball didn't hit the ground for a long time. I thought I could tell who came up with it. No one had, but Georgia Tech's gonna need some of those shots, maybe not into double coverage down the field to stretch out the middle of this defense. Sims just one of six passing to start this game. Got unbalanced. That was a run formation. 
Sims is going to keep it. Has a lot of room. 30, 20, 15. Can he get to the end zone easily? 34 yards on the score for Jeff Sims. All right, well, Jeff Sims might not be successful through the air, but you're seeing what the one-two punch of J.P. Mason and Jeff Sims can do and brought pressure off the edge from the outside linebacker position. Sims saw it. He pulled the ball. Really good read on that true read option. And you saw his speed. I mean, he's so tall at 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 that he looks like he's not running very fast, but he ran away from this entire NC State team. And just like that, Chris, we got ourselves a game. Gavin Stewart with the PAT splits the uprights. We do. NC State's lead now cut to three. Jeff Sims has been doing it with his legs more than his arm today here. He goes 34 yards for the score. Sims finishing off that 75-yard drive. All eight plays gained on the ground. Just over two and a half minutes. So Tech started throwing the football early on in this game. And like these last couple of drives, especially that one, they just started leaning on the run game with Sims and Mason, and it worked. Now down just 10-7. Austin Kent kicking off for the Jackets. Bam Knight from his five. Outside, 30. Stays in bounds, and then dropped at the 35. Do have a flag down on the play. Let's check the call from Riley Johnson, our referee. Thousand. I think that was a pretty good year for NC State quarterback. It was a really, really good year. Good <laughs> year for Georgia Tech football, year. too. So the Wolfpack starting from their own 12 instead of the 35. Big penalty. Hockman has a receiver open. Again, the freshman who's having a big game so far today. Porter Rooks brings it in and gets the Wolfpack out of trouble. Yeah, Porter Rooks, I mean, only has 19 catches on the entire season, but they've gone to him a lot today, and you can see why. He's a guy who just you can, can get open, find that open space. I think they're, they're looking at him to be a guy to maybe play along with their Thomas in the slot. Hockman red pressure on the right side and just got it out quickly to CJ Riley. Hockman started the game one for six. He's completed nine of ten since. Moving the ball to the near hash. Man-to-man man to man for Georgia Tech. Curry showed pressure. Now he backs out, looks to the sideline to bark out the call. Yeah, and Curry's checking out of it. They know it's man. They're going to check the zone. Hockman gives to Bam. Just brute strength. Bounces off the initial tackle. Quez Jackson was a tackling machine for these Yellow Jackets. Couldn't wrap up night. Gain of five, third and one. Going fast. Give tonight again. No room on the left side, takes it to the right and picks up the first down. Whistles all over the place. Got a Georgia Tech player down. Another. Bam Knight's a really, really good player for this team. And it just, it, it, it's starting to look a little bit easy for this NC State offense. and. Well, there you have it. But it's put a lot of pressure on Jeff Sims in this Georgia Tech offense. Vinci State's able to move the ball downfield so easily. Person with a score, Knight with a score. And NC State gets that touchdown right back. Done with the try, and it's good. 17-7. Wolfpack on senior night. Extend their lead back to 10. We have a flag on the play, several of them. I think we might have a running or a roughing the kicker. Riley Johnson going to discuss it with the other officials. And with Coach Doran.
Thank you, Riley, for explaining that to us. Lead here, he would. I know you like seeing this crushing block from this offensive line. Yeah, E. Wood has been talking about that, that guy, Iki Iguanu, all week and just saying, watch number 79, watch how he blocks. This guy not only blocks well, but he blocks hard into the whistle. They give out bottles of syrup for pancake blocks. This dude said, <laughs> eat. Mason to midfield. Now he's gotten loose on, on over these last couple of drives, and he's picking up yards and chunks. This offensive line. I'll tell you what, for Georgia Tech, the offensive line, they started throwing the football early in this game, but now they're really starting to establish a new line of scrimmage and open up big holes for these running backs. Yeah, and, and Mason, nine rushes, 66 yards. He has been doing a lot, and especially a lot in this second quarter. Sims now tried to get to Malachi Carter, well covered on the play by Shaheen Paddle. Yeah. And that ball just didn't come out right. It looked like it wobbled off his hand, and the Sims is only one for seven passing in this game, only 12 yards. It's really been rushing. You know, rush first, rush often, and they're just trying to get something going through the air, but it's interesting because, you know, regardless, this NC State defense in this second quarter has been, you know, giving up a lot of rushing yards and still not having to respect the pass. Mason, look at that hole. 40, dropped it to 35. Flag on the play. Maybe that's why the hole is so big. Let's check it. Jack to four, guilty of the hold. Yeah, good, good play call by Dave Padden. It understands it's this 3-3-5 defense. If we pull guys, if we bring guys back across the line of scrimmage, we might get some open running lanes. It just got a little too grabby on the jersey there, but look for a lot more of this tight end behind the line of scrimmage, seal blocks or guards pulling. Sometimes that trips up these 3-3-5 teams, especially if they get down almost in that bear look with three guys on the guard center, another guard. Another huge opening for a Georgia Tech back. This time it's Dante Smith. Yeah, we mentioned it, you know, Coming into the second quarter, don't run on up the middle versus NC State. Well, Georgia Tech did not listen, and <laughs> rightfully so. They saw something uh, from upstairs, and they have been just attacking straight up the middle of this defense. Sims wrapped the middle and got nowhere. Eric, what are you seeing with this offensive line? back five yards as Quinny was offside. Claw start against Quinny. That's what they did last week against Duke. 377 yards, almost eight yards a carry, tons of big plays. There's nothing wrong with 167 yards a game during the regular season, but they blew it wide open last week in Atlanta. Sims over the middle has a receiver that Sanders hit hard but he's going to pick up a nice gain battle is on the defense for NC State 15 yards it'll bring up third down and short yeah good job with the hard play action they brought the tight end back behind the line a guard pulled and opened up that window for Donica Sanders you should just see where they go three receivers at the bottom of your screen Pack showing pressure. Tech tries to run for it. They're going to come up short. Yeah, don't be surprised if they go for it on fourth down here. They feel like they can get a yard, a yard or two yards. Peyton Wilson shaking up again. 
Help make that stop. Number 11 for NC State. Leading tackler in the conference. Is he holding that left arm again? Looks like he might be. Injured that play, uh, injured that arm earlier in the four, first quarter. We'll check in on Wilson when we come back. It's one out, it's four down, and Georgia Tech is going to go for it from the NC State 34. Fourth and two for the Jackets. Now we get a whistle just before the snap. Well, someone's unhappy with where somebody is. They wants them, to, wants them to be in a different spot. <laughs> NC State calls a timeout and wants to talk things over. Apologize for the language coming up. State Farm halftime report. I'm sure much more decorum from the studio in Bristol. Jordan Cornette and a cast of characters coming up with the State Farm halftime report. They'll recap our first half here and take a look at Notre Dame and Syracuse. Don't forget Clemson playing tonight as well. Miami here on the ACC Network, so a lot to talk about during the State Farm halftime report in just a moment. That timeout, if nothing else, allowed NC State to get Peyton Wilson uh, back onto the field. At least I would have thought it would have, but now he's coming back off. Yeah, he is not holding that arm real well at all. I think Dave Dorn wants an explanation on that as well. Yeah, but yeah Wilson is back off on fourth down. Now Sims coming under center. Just trying to draw him off sides. I really doubt they snap it to him under center. I don't right. think he's taking an under center snap pretty much all season. Now Sanders in motion to the top of your screen. I'm just telling your defensive line, earmuffs, do not jump off sides and give them a free first down. Yeah, just three seconds on the play clock, and Georgia Tech is going to call a timeout here. Georgia Tech, 30-second timeout, first charge of this half. Oh. Peyton Wilson has to wait another play to be able to come back on the field. <laughs> They're icing Wilson. But I still think that this is a go-for-it opportunity for Georgia Tech. I think they just realized, look, this is such an important moment. Let's see if we can draw them off sides. If not, we'll call a timeout, and then we'll reline up and dial up our best fourth and two play. But I'd be very surprised to see them punt the ball in this field position, and with the wind in their face, very, very long field goal attempt. Well, it looks like even after that timeout, Dave Patnode's offense is coming back out on the field for Georgia Tech. A lot of space up the middle there. And they're going to give it to Mason, and he's going to be stopped short. Tripped up in the backfield. And Trey Thomas eventually brings him down. It looked like Isaiah Moore may have gotten a hand on a shoestring here. Yeah, good job by Isaiah Moore. They just ran a dual play, meaning double teams all across the front. See, 78-57 double team, but because they did that, Mikey Minahan, Minahan the, the, guard, the center, wasn't able to get up to Isaiah Moore. Good job of shooting the gap. I mean, that is a... That's a next-level play by Isaiah Moore, timing that pressure up, and then Drake Thomas coming over top, finishing it off. NC State holds and takes over on downs. Hockman has all kinds of time. Now flushed out downfield. Right on the end, on the sideline, and the receiver makes a catch. That was a Mezzi who went up and got it. And now NC State again wants to go quickly. Rolling on the field is a completed forward pass for a first down, and that play is under further review. Now let's check to see if Amezi got a foot in. Yeah, and, re and regardless of whether he got a foot in, Bailey Hockman, fantastic job of buying time, rolling outside the pocket. Let's see right here. If... Mm. Left toe? Left toe. I think he kept that left toe in. Interesting. You don't really want to catch it with your pinkies together like this. You want to try to high point it with your thumbs together. But let's see the... Ball's in possession, that left big toe stays in bounds. Really good yeah. 
out of control. I mean, it's hard. It's hard not to jump for that ball. I mean, it's up there. It's above your eye level. You, your body says jump for it. But great job by Mecca Mezzi, understanding that I need to get my toe down reception. To me, that's completion. If this stands as called on the field, and it was a completion, let's hear from our referee, Riley Johnson. Here, the ruling of the field is confirmed. Hockman has now completed 11 of his last 12 and five in a row. He's really heating up. And that's the, you know, that, that's the piece of the offense that Georgia Tech just doesn't have yet. And I think they might get it. I think Jeff Sims is on his way to get there. But you, know, you look at the ability for, for NC State to run the ball, but then you know going 11 for 12 with who came into your season as your backup quarterback, I mean, just good job offensively by NC State. Jordan Houston now the third back in that backfield room for NC State on the carry. Giving Knight in person a break. Nice pickup on first down. Another run set. Houston again. Wanye Thomas coming up to make the stop. Houston close to a first down. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Second down. Was a first down. We'll move it back. It'll now be second down and about 10. NC State, you know, they're usually really good at this. They do an unbalanced set where basically the two farthest away wide receivers are both on the ball. They just didn't get aligned correctly. And look at the inside guy, Mecca Mezzi, might have been just off the ball slightly. But that's how they set up their unbalanced run formation sets. See if they do it again here. Look at 88. Devin Carter, he's, on, he, he's supposed to be on the line of scrimmage right there. Houston. Give him about six. Third down and short now for NC State. Tech showing pressure. Originally on the outside, now they back off. Hawkman going downfield in a double coverage, has a receiver. Devin Carter goes up and takes it away from two defenders at NC State now inside the 10. See, I kind of feel bad not including Devin Carter in the open with some of the big name wide receivers. Really good job going up and getting that ball at the high point right over the guys. I mean, good throw by Bailey Hawkman, even better concentration by Devin Carter to come down with that one. Jaquan Griffin injured again for Georgia Tech. He was hurt early on in this half. Back on the turf. This depleted Georgia Tech defense, really at all levels, but especially on the defensive line and in the secondary. Cannot afford to have players like Jaquan Griffin unavailable. It was interesting, Chris, when you look at the beginning of this season for a team where you, know, you come in and usually the first game back, you know, playing, you don't see a ton of injuries because guys are just getting used to hitting again. But the injuries usually come the week later when their bodies just haven't recovered the same way. And with the three weeks off for Georgia Tech and then playing again last week, it, it's kind of interesting to think, you know, maybe if maybe some of those that time off and the hits that were sustained last week are playing into you know, some of these injuries or, or, or cramping issues that these players are having, just not used to recovering the same way after that big three-week off. As Jaquan Griffin walks off, NC State will have a first and goal coming up. Yeah, and you, you look at this, just the schedule shifts, the Pittsburgh game, the Miami game, they're, they're put off to after this current game, you know, and in between that Notre Dame and, and that Duke game, a lot, a lot of time off. To give to Houston. Bangs his way inside the five. Give him three yards on that carry. Tackle by 39, Wesley Walker. Second and goal from the four-yard line. It's a good look at Jordan Houston, the sophomore from Waldorf, Maryland. Making the most of his play and time on this drive. Yeah. 
Fake to Houston. Hawkman to his tight end. Nothing doing that time. Auden Reith on the receiving end. Third and goal from the three. Tackle by number 24, Kenny. Dylan Auden Reith. He's celebrating senior day. He's a captain of this team. Third and goal from the three yard line. You look at third down and goal. I mean, they've been so successful on the deep fade ball, the corner of the end zone fade balls to either Devin Carter or Emeka Mezzi. You got to think those are the first look options. And then you got Thayer Thomas, number five, in the slot. Looks like man to man. Hockman to the corner of the end zone. Beautifully defended by Wanye Thomas. Trying to hit Thayer Thomas there in the corner, but Wanye Thomas broke it up. Uh, well, Wanye Thomas, unbelievable job. He played, in, he was inside on his leverage just by alignment he was beat. Understood the route that there Thomas was going to run. He undercut it, and that's a 6'3", 220-pound free safety playing like a cornerback out there. Fantastic job, and I mean, such an important play to hold NC State to only three points on this drive. 20-yard attempt here from Christopher Dunn. Yes, yes, yes. And he nails it. Now 11 to 14 on the season. NC State extends their lead 20 to 7. And Chris, you know, 53 couple... still on the clock here, Mark, for Georgia Tech to do something offensively. Yeah, and you, you got to be impressed. You know, although Georgia Tech defense, the last few drives have really given up a lot of yards, touchdowns on the prior ones, but holding the three points keeps this a two-score game. And so if Georgia Tech is able to drive the ball and hold the football for the, the remainder of this quarter, you know, they, they could put some points on this board and put some more pressure on the Wolfpack going into halftime. Trenton Gill going to kick off to Dante Smith. Standing by on his own goal line. NC State has scored on their last four drives. But Tech did hold him out of the end zone there after having first and goal inside the six-yard line. Smith lets it go over his head. Touchback. Tech will take it over from their own 25 with 3.53 left to go in this first half. Don't forget, coming up tonight at 8 o'clock on the ACC Network, Miami and Duke, our ACC Network primetime football matchup presented by Geico. Opportunity to see De'Ara King and the job Manny Diaz has done with this Miami team. Everybody thought they would be better than they were last year. And with De'Ara King, it would give him that explosive element of quarterback. He After certainly has done that. Dead. Personal foul. This receiving team number 43. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Georgia Tech football, first down. That's just an undisciplined penalty right there, Mark, that's going to make things that much more difficult on your offense as they're trying to get back into this game. <laughs> you don't have to see the replay of that one to, to know it was a bad penalty. But a much longer field to drive now for, for Georgia Tech on offense. And I mean, th this is a Georgia Tech offense that, that they have the ability to drive the ball. They have the ability to score points. You talk about... You know, the game tonight, Duke-Miami, I mean, Duke gave up 56 points to Georgia Tech last last week, and, you know, they have it in them. They have the ability. I just, Jeff Sims has not been able to find a rhythm at all this game. I mean, when you complete two passes in the entire half, it's almost the antithesis of rhythm. Jet sweep going nowhere. That's the speedy freshman, too, Nate McCollum. He gets dropped by number 56, Val Martin, after a gain of maybe a yard. You know, a lot of these plays are just being telegraphed, quite honestly. Put formation into the boundary, got your speedy wide receiver in the slot. I mean, that's, that's jet sweep written all over it. They got to mix in some passing plays. NC State coming with some pressure on the outside. Sims rolls the pocket, hits Adonicus Sanders. Good job by the offensive line picking up the pressure and C28 Dante Smith picking up the late pressure. Good job throwing across his body, rolling out to his left. 
Smith wow, picked another. up that pressure too. And Sanders <laughs> again on the receiving end. <laughs> guess, who, guess who that was though? <laughs> Flying over top. That was Tanner Ingle. I mean, we, we talked about car crashes earlier in, the, in this game for Tanner Ingle. I mean, Tanner Ingle will throw his body around. Good pickup by, by Dante Smith on that one, but number 10's flying. Bad snap handled by Sims. Smith can't do anything with it. Timing was completely broken up on that play, and Smith has dropped for a loss. Yeah, nothing, nothing you can do on that play. You gotta be able to handle that snap a little better, get the snap back up, but you take a look at Sims' numbers today, only four for 10, and two of those were on this drive. You know, but that zero in the interception box is what's keeping him in the game. He hasn't turned the ball over, and I would much rather take incompletions rather than interceptions. Third down and three for the Jackets. Sims with all kinds of time, surveys the field, hits a receiver at midfield. Sanders again, who's been his primary target on this drive, 16 yards on that reception. I got to tell you what, you know, a lot gets put on quarterbacks in terms of the four for 10 or five for 11, whatever he is now. But these wide receivers, apart from maybe Adonica Sanders, are barely running routes. I mean, they are jogging their routes. And the, you know, the, the routes concept is just taking way too long to develop. And Sims has nowhere to go with the football. Smith picks up three on first down. Now inside two minutes to play in this first half. Smith has completed, or Sims rather, has completed four passes on this drive. Over the middle. Again hitting Sanders. 14 yards for another first down. Lindsey well, stays playing with three really, really high safeties, almost a quarters coverage look with these guys all across the back. And you know, it puts a lot of stress on Isaiah Moore, the guy in the middle. Good job by Sims understanding and finding those soft spots in the middle of the defense. Ooh. Keeps it. Great move to stay alive. Finally goes down. Tech with two timeouts on the board. Pick up a seven for Sims. And a fresh set of downs for Georgia Tech. Whistle blows this one dead. Flags come flying in. Ball start. Offense, number 12. Five-yard penalty. First down. Cardinal sin for receiver on the outside, huh? Yeah, Cardinal sin, but when you're the only guy who's been running actual routes and catching footballs, <laughs> you let it go. At least I'll let it go. Jalen Camp coming in the game for Adonica Sanders. Sanders five catches on the day, far and away leading receiver for Georgia Tech. Smith trying to probe the outside, stays on his feet. Goes out of bounds after a nice gain, and then I'll stop the clock with 42 seconds left to go in this first half. Yeah, Dante Smith has really been in that entire drive, and I think one of the reasons he's in, he, he obviously does pretty good in blitz pickup, but they also think he has really good speed. He's like a 4-4 guy, so he's the type of guy he can just break a handoff. You saw him get to the edge on that one, and good run. Sims to pass. Has time. Eludes a would-be tackler. Now he's going to try and get what he can on his own before being flipped out of bounds. Picked up maybe a yard. There's Tanner Ingle. That's what's car crash number five, I think, on the day. <laughs> yeah, car crash number five. And I'll tell you what, if you're being a former defender, some of the car crashes when you are inflicting the hit, they don't hurt very much. When, but, but sometimes when when you guys are both inflicting the hit, it is problematic. And, it, you know, it sets up a big third down. And remember, if Georgia Tech scores here, they get the ball to start the half, which would be a really good give and get opportunity. Whistle on the play. And it is a 30 second timeout. Wolfpack calling a timeout. Here, let's check out this car crash. Tanner Ingle and Jeff Sims. You don't feel this, though, until the next day, though, right? Even as a defender, even if you get the worst of it, your adrenaline's pumping so hard. Yeah, you hope so. Yeah, I hope so. But yeah, remember, right there, yeah, you're not going to feel that one to the next day, but 
Tanner Engel, I mean, he's he's listed at 188. When we talked to Tony Gibson, he said, what's he listed at? 190, 180? He's probably a buck 75. And I mean, he's a guy that, uh, you know, Tony Gibson said, I, want, I would love for all my players to play like Tanner. Now, does get a targeting penalty every now and then, but he is a also physical, misses, physical player. Can miss some time, too. Missed a couple of games earlier in the year just because he's throwing his body around so much. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting. In the games that Tanner Engel has played, this NC State team is undefeated. That's a pretty good number to have. Bringing the pressure on third down. Sims has to get rid of it. It almost hit his tight end. Boy, that would have been a fantastic catch by Dylan Devaney. Just couldn't quite hang on to it before going out of bounds. Oh, good job by Justin. Just to get rid of the ball in the area of your tight end. And Sims is not in any hurry to come off the field for the field goal team. And we talked to you know, Jeff Collins. I mean, the, the field goal kicking situation, Chris, at Georgia Tech, it, it's... It's been up and down. It's been, yeah. it's been something. It's been something for sure. Well, they've only attempted one field goal in the last five games, Mark, and that was a yeah. miss. So they're going, they're going for it here on fourth and six. Sims to throw. Flush gets it to Mason. Can he pick up the first down? He's got a lot to go. He isn't going to get there. He'll be stopped two yards short. Pressure came right away off the left side, number 31, and great job not running past the ball carrier and making the tackle. We saw Peyton Wilson in on that play. Vi Jones. There's a very, very underrated NC State linebacker core, and they have made some fantastic plays in this game, and maybe none bigger than that tackle to keep points off the board before half. Positive drive for Georgia Tech, and Jeff Sims started to feel a little bit of a rhythm there throwing the football, but it ends in zero points, and it ends the first half. Look at Bailey Hockman making his way to the locker room, finished 14-21, 209 yards. And that NC State Wolfpack offense that has been fired from all cylinders, winners of three straight Hockman. Sets up the screen pass here. Ricky Person gets a first down. Pack in the red zone. Next play. Person again takes the ball outside. 20 yards for the score on this one. Check out the stiff arm. If you missed it the first time, that's all, all good. We re-rack it here. Stiff arm of the defense. The end zone. Pack lead 10-0. Next pack possession. Off the play fake. Hawkman finds C.J. Riley for the 36-yard completion. NC State inside the 10. Next play, Zonovan, Zonovan Knight, bam, finds six. Pack offense thriving. Pack lead 20 to 7 at the half. Yards passing Georgia Tech on the ground. 151 of their yards running the football and especially over those last couple of drives but as you said that fourth down the lack of being able to convert on two fourth downs that one in the red zone there right before the end of the first half really the difference in this game with nc state up 13. tech gets the ball here to start the second half so an opportunity to close that gap is Smith will allow it to bounce through the back of the end zone. Eric Wood caught up with the Georgia Tech head coach just moments ago. He, he Wood, what happened? Yeah, Jeff Collins said he's proud of the way his guys fought in the first half, but they simply need to quit hurting themselves. They're moving back too many times on offense, giving up big plays on defense, and then in class, classic Jeff Collins fashion, he wants them to celebrate more. They've had some great plays tonight, and he's not seeing that positive energy out of his guys. Yeah, they've had five penalties there in that first half that cost them, and then as you saw in that graphic, NC State with eight tackles for loss. They're just getting behind the chains too much. Starting to run the football here to start the second half, and Mason won't have very far to go. As a matter of fact, he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. As that tackling machine, Peyton Wilson with another stop for the Wolfpack. Yeah, I wouldn't. And he's still holding his left arm, Mark. Yeah, I was about to say, I wouldn't be surprised if Peyton Wilson leaves this game at some point soon. I mean, he has been favoring that left arm really since halfway through the first quarter. It seems like every single time he uses it, he is in extreme pain. 
Sims incomplete to Malachi Carter. That was right on the money. Machine battle on the defense, but that's a catch Carter should have made. Yeah, it is, and you got to help out your quarterback in these situations. Jeff Collins wants his team to celebrate. Well, you got to have some things to celebrate about. And, you know, they haven't been awful by any means, but they need to start converting and making these catches. And you know, we talked in the first half of just, you know, the effort from these wide receivers needs to be improved, especially now man-to-man -man across the board as NC State shows pressure. They come with just four, so Sims has some time. Now he's going to try and do it on his own. Gets to the 35 and is rocked. Flag's going to come out there. There's Ingle again. That's another car crash. But this time it's going to draw a penalty. Yep, and that's going to be targeting. And additional sure. flags came out late, Mark. We might have several penalties on this one. We have to sort this out. Sims picked up the first down before he got hit. Then he slid and got hit hard by free safety Tanner Ingle. And you know, physical player, we talked a lot about him, you know, his effort, but certain times like that, your know, quarterback's obviously sliding. You got to pull up. You got to control your body. After the play, late hit, personal foul with targeting on the defense. That play, the review. The call is a late hit with targeting. They will review it. We'll let you know what they say when we come back. Targeting call against Tanner Ingle confirmed while we were away, so he has been ejected. Explain this, Mark. Right now, Sims starts the sliding motion, and once he starts sliding, he becomes a defenseless player. So any contact to the head or neck area by any part of the body by the defender is going to result in a targeting call. Yeah, that, that's a good call. And, and, you know, Jeff Sims, we saw him try to slide earlier in the game, just not really proficient at sliding. But, you know, in that play, it, it wasn't a clean slide, but definitely was a slide. He gave himself up. And you see, is, you know, when you are ruled a defenseless player, like he was after he slid, you cannot contact the head or neck area at all. Mason on second down will come up just shy. It'll bring up third and short. And that's the third time this season that Ingle has been guilty of a targeting infraction and ejected. Was ejected in the Virginia game against Liberty as well. So he'll have to serve a one-game suspension, which would be uh, presumably the bowl game if there is a bowl game coming up for NC State. And you would think there would be even win or lose today. Even though we're having bowl games canceled left and right, we've already had 10 of them canceled. Mason trying to, you know, Sims on the outside makes a player miss, then goes down after a 10-yard pickup. That's a first down. Great fake by Sims. Yeah, and much better slide as well. But good job. Just really kind of smooth pull. Learned his lesson. That's a, that's a slide. That is a true slide. Another unbalanced formation by Georgia Tech. Another run-looking set. Look for that quarterback option at the top of your screen. Sims keeps it, does the read very well, as if he would have handed that off to Dante Smith, it would have been a big loss. Instead, it's about a six-yard gain. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're, they're loading up one side of the field, getting basically a, a, a nub on the other side of the field. And, and when you, you see this unbalanced set, really the whole defense is shift towards the bottom of the screen, which just leaves really a one-on-one -on -one with Jeff Sims and Isaac Duffy, the defender, and Sims picked up six on first down. Smith, nowhere to go, spins out of it, stays on his feet. Now he's just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, which he does, and maybe even picks up a yard. Wow. I mean, it's good job defensively up front. Savion Jackson, number 90, just really sets the edge, but Smith just refuses to go down and picks up a couple yards and makes it third and short. And that's the type of effort that Jeff Collins talks about. He said, yeah, we are a team that is effort-based team. He's going to show that play by, by Dante Smith as you know, one that showed an example of the effort that he wants to see. Unbalanced now again. Now Jordan Mason in the backfield on third down. The give to Mason, big hole. Into the secondary, down to the 15. Another 13 yards for this running attack now that is getting close to 200 yards rushing on the day.
Yeah, good down block on the outside by Zach Quinney, number 73. And I think Jordan Mason had a little bit more room out to the outside if he had just kind of cut out rather than in. But either way, good job picking up the first down in there. I mean, they're in striking distance. This is a red zone drive. Last time they kept it in the quarterback's hands to run around the left edge for a touchdown. Sims keeps it. Has a big hole inside the five, down to the goal line. Did he stretch the ball across? They're going to rule him down at the one. Fourteen yards for Sims, and Georgia Tech wants to go quickly. Ooh. Now we have all kinds of whistles. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> NC State player was a little banged up right towards the Ball end of that start. last play. Offense number 54, five-yard penalty, first down. And, and true freshman heard, Jordan Williams. Yeah, but you heard that you heard from the sideline saying, "Stay down, stay down," because you know, the, right at the end of this play, you'll you'll see number 52 hustling downfield. He was slow to get up, and the sideline saying, "Stay down," to kind of you know, make make the referees call an injury timeout. I think Dave Doran thinks that. Maybe Georgia Tech has been toying with that a little in the first half. So many guys, injuries coming back in the game. Well, the false start could prove costly for Georgia Tech. Here's Mason trying to muscle his way down to the one-yard line, and he does. Second and gold now on a drive that has taken some time off of this clock, almost five minutes here in the second half, and Georgia Tech has gone the length of the field entirely on the ground. Can they punch it in here? Oh, the final two yards start. and another false start. This time false the tight end, Dylan Devaney. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Second down. Tech, one of the most penalized teams in the country coming into this game, and they're killing themselves on this drive. Uh, and part of the thing, you know, Georgia Tech's trying to go fast. They're fast at the line of scrimmage. They're, they're trying to keep NC State off balance, which is fine. But at the same time, it, that, sometimes that results in false starts, not not having the regular cadence you're used to. Look at the penalties per game and turnovers. Both of those things have been very problematic for Georgia Tech all year. Now Sims under center. He'll fake it to Mason and rolling out. Can he make a man miss? He cannot. Nice job on the edge by number 33 for NC State to make the stop when he's one on one. And that's Isaiah Duffy, Isaac Duffy, rather, the sophomore from Binghamton, New York, who did a nice job of just staying home here. Yeah, and, and he made a few good plays. You know, he, he made the tackle on Sims earlier. Good play on there, bringing up third down. And, you know, this is a situation that Georgia Tech is, you know, not necessarily comfortable with. Remember the fact that they do not have confidence in their kicker. So you could still potentially just try to run the ball and get it in an opportunity where, you know, you could have two runs here to try to get in the end zone. Jamias Griffin in the backfield. Screen pass to Griffin, and it's tipped and goes over his head. Now, it might still be a live football. It goes out of bounds before the officials blow the whistle, so they're going to rule that on the field as a lateral. Yeah, they are, and I think Tyler Baker Williams, number 13, you see him coming off the edge. He tips this football. Pass that went out of bounds. Fourth down. And, it, and it's not where the ball goes after the tip. It's, it's really just the, the two feet after it leaves jeff sims hand and before it hits tyler baker's hand and they're gonna have to look at this closely on whether you know j the direction of the pass was going to be forward before that tip kind of looked to me like it was it's a 14 yard loss as it stands as it is called on the field as a lateral let's take another look the see where he throws it from of a backwards pass is under further review. You can't tell from that angle. Uh, it's so difficult to tell, and it's crazy. We'll find out when we come back with the refs decide, but this is a very, very difficult. Doing the call, it was determined that it was a forward pass from Jeff Sims, and they reversed the call in the field. Take another look right here at this angle. Might be our best. Yeah, and it's not going to be where 22 is because he might be behind the quarterback, but it looks like Sims was trying to lead him down the field a little bit. I think it's a good call. In, in order for it to be a fumble and a lateral, it has to be an actual backwards pass. So if it's if it's sideways or forwards, they're going to say that it's a forward pass. Good call by the officials. And as you mentioned, only one field goal attempt in the last five games. This will make it two. Gavin Stewart 
on from 26 yards out. Curves it in. So Georgia Tech converts on the field goal and cuts into that deficit now trailing by 10 after a drive that took over six minutes here to start the second half. Yeah, and that's completely fine. You don't need to score fast. You just need to make sure you come away with points. Obviously, being on the one-yard line and then having two penalties to back you up is something that Jeff Collins is not going to be pleased with at all, but at least they got three points. And now it's going to be up to the Georgia Tech depleted defense to get a stop and force NC State to give the ball back to him. Georgia Tech going over 200 yards rushing in the game on that drive. Now at 214, NC State, by contrast, has really done it offensively, largely on the strength of Bailey Hockman's arm. Over 200, and, over 200 passing yards there in the first half for Hockman. Let's see if that continues as they look to keep this lead in the second half. Yeah, you know, that, it, it's an accomplishment, too, for Georgia Tech offensively. I mean, NC State defense, they're ranked sixth in the ACC, only giving up 150 rushing yards a game, so well over that average. And they've been successful. Here's Bam Knight from his three. Cut down to the 25, and that's where Hockman will come out and take over. Don't forget tonight. As a matter of fact, it's coming up after us. Miami and Duke, Derek King and company. Our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. I think Manny Diaz is in running for the ACC Coach of the Year. I'd have to yeah. say he and Dave Doran are, are among those candidates for sure. Got to throw in Brian Kelly. Anybody who beats Clemson has got to be considered. Wolfpack trying to run here to open up this drive. Look at the leg churn. That is Ricky Person at the at his finest right there, <laughs> using that 215-pound body to push the pile. Check on the flag. Gain of about three on the run, flag notwithstanding. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 79 on the offense. 15-yard penalty, the down will count, second down. Ikwonu, the guilty party. It's on the left side of your screen. Yeah, I mean, so you kind of saw him flash around the top of that screen. I mean, he was just, he was kept on blocking his dude. I don't know, Eric Wood, tell me what you think about that penalty after the play. Yeah, that's called blocking through the whistle, Mark. Not to the whistle. He blocked <laughs> through it. Sometimes refs let that go. But this has been a chippy game throughout. Unnecessary roughness um, it has been called throughout the game on both sides. They're trying to keep it as clean as possible. Now second down and 21 because it was after the play. But Thayer Thomas on the receiving end here. And that's a big pickup for the Wolfpack. Going tempo again, not allowing Georgia Tech to get new players on the field. And there Thomas, he's fresh. You know, there Thomas is a guy, you know, he's been rotating in and out with Porter Brooks, or Porter Rooks, I'm sorry. And so he's a guy, you know, that, that slot position does a lot of running throughout a game. It allows him to play full speed when he rotates in and out. Hockman again with time in a passing alley and hits a Mecca Mizzy. I mean, really good move there, Thomas, understanding that his defender was going to the flat, working outside of him over top, finding the little hole in the zone coverage. Person shot down by Wesley Walker on the outside. Another one of these young players forced into action today with Georgia Tech being so depleted on the defensive side, and Walker's had a good game. He has. You know, it's interesting. You know, we're watching this NC State offense. Beginning of the year really, really relied heavily on the run game. I mean, it was all Bam Knight and Ricky Persons. And right now, you know, it really feels like they're they're setting up the pass play with the run. And you know, this is a now pass first offense, or at least pass big chunk play offense. Now let's see if Tech defense can get off the field. 
Hawkman has all kinds of time over the middle and a receiver too. That's a Messi again. NC State's looking to go quickly. Now we've got movement on the left side of the NC State line. Both sides claiming it's the other side. The only opinion that matters is the opinion of Riley Johnson here, our referee. Offside, defense number 35, jumping into the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, first down. True freshman, Sherrod Ivey, guilty party. That's the eighth penalty of the night against Georgia Tech. So first and five for Hawkman and the Wolfpack. Tech comes with pressure. Can Curry get there? He cannot. Overshoots his receiver, Thomas. And it'll be second down and five. Yeah, there Thomas is looking for a little bit of a hold. Looks like he was restricted ever so slightly on that route. Either way, second and five. And Sounded like a few of the cardboard cutouts there. At Carter Finley were calling for that pull as well. Mm -hmm. We do have some fans there tonight. I think it's 5,000. Uh, the limit of fans inside Carter Finley tonight on senior night. Second down and five for Hockman. Little screen. Thayer Thomas gets rocked too. Jaquan Griffin was there. Tariq Carpenter as well. Great play by Jaquan Griffin. Struggling, fighting through some cramps earlier in the game, but those screen passes, the, the tunnel screen to wide receivers and then the little running back screens, I mean, as a linebacker, as a defensive back, you say, look, we're going to turn it back inside, but we need guys up front running to the ball. Great job by him to, to make that stop for a loss, actually, on the play. Wolfpack 4 of 8 on third down in this game. Hockman, pressure up the middle. Avoids it, tries to get the jump ball to his receiver and cannot, but we have a flag. Amezi went up and got it, but he landed out of bounds. Now let's check the flag and see if it was on Zamari Walton who was covering on the play. And I think it's going to be. Wow. I was going to say, I thought that might have been on Emeka Amezi pushing off. pass interference, number 21. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And Mar words Walton. between Walton and Amezi. <laughs> and Walton can't believe it. Let's look at this end of this play. I mean, their hands on and, you know, interesting. Although Walton does back off at the end, Mecca Amezi never, never pushes. He just kind of fades away and still out of bounds, but picked up 15 yards in first down. And that's what Mecca Amezi does. Yeah, I mean, he's so big, it's hard to cover him. Back in the red zone. Hockman, they give the person. Quez Jackson brings him down, but person picks up close to four yards on first down. Tackle by number 44, Quez Jackson. Get a three. Second just running the clock out and running the clock down. And, you know, this game, it just, it kind of feels like it's more of a spread than a 10-point game, but you know, this is still such an important red zone defensive drive for Georgia Tech. They can hold him a field goal, keep it a two-score game. Person gets down close to the 10. It'll bring up third down and short. Ricky Person, Jr. on the run. Tech defense hasn't been able to get off the field on this drive on third down. Big third down and one. Person again met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Well, Jamon Brooks and company may have just been able to get off the field on third down. Now, if you're NC State, what are you thinking here on fourth down? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm kicking a field goal. I'm walking away with points, but Jamon Brooks, fantastic job of playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. 
It doesn't look like NC State's going to do that, but, you know, I would try to go up 13 points, and we know field goals, extra points have been difficult for Georgia Tech. Person. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. That would all it. depend on the spot. He got to the 10-yard line, but I'm not sure he got there. He did he not. Georgia Tech holds on fourth down. <laughs> wow. I mean, what a big change of events. You know, this, this long drive down the field, you're aided by the big penalty, but fantastic job up front by the front seven of this Yellow Jacket defense playing behind the line of scrimmage. We'll find out who the four teams are on January, uh, or, or rather on December 11th, and then January 11th, the national championship. Semifinals on the first, Rose Bowl and Sugar Bowl. Georgia Tech, after a fourth down stand, taken over offensively. Sims behind his receiver, couldn't connect with the freshman, McCollum. He had him, too. He had him. I mean, one, one of the rare times where one of these receivers was open and Sims had him, just wasn't able to connect. You just well, you know, what a season, right? You're a true freshman quarterback at Georgia Tech coming in during 2020 with COVID, with postponements, with delays, all that stuff. And all that being said, I mean, Jeff Sims has still has such a bright future. Mason can't quite evade the tackler, and Drake Thomas has had himself a good game. His uniform looks it, too. It's filthy. So funny, Drake Thomas, really good player, linebacker for this team. He's kind of the, the run stuffer, but look at that body type, right? His brother is there, Thomas. I mean, he took a lot of that weight off, off his brother. <laughs> he he right. was stealing some food off that dinner plate. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving, I wonder which one ate more on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know if either one of them gained 15 pounds like Eric Wood did. That's Third impressive. and nine for Sims has an alley to throw and has a receiver and they connect. That's Jalen Camp. And they convert a big third down deep in their own territory to keep this drive alive. Good job working back to the ball. You see how Camp where he didn't break directly to the sideline. He kind of worked back towards the quarterback and made an easy throw for Sims. Good job being on target and Georgia lining up in that same unbalanced look with two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen that you can't see. The give to Mason puts his shoulder down and runs through one arm tackle. And unfortunately for NC State, that arm tackle was Peyton Wilson, who's had a banged up arm all night long. Yeah, they got to get him out of this game. I mean, he, he's he's honestly he's at risk to hurt himself further right now. Uh, and looks like they have pulled him for this yeah. play. Yeah, I think he ran off just in a great deal of pain. Sims has pressure, also has a receiver. That's Sanders who stays in bounds. Close to midfield before finally being tackled. They'll mark him down at the 46. Yeah, Don Donica Sanders, I mean, he has kind of come out of nowhere for this team. He's got five or such, six receptions today. He only has eight on the entire season. He's a guy you... You know, he's, he's a redshirt junior. He's been in this program for a little bit, just hasn't had a ton of opportunities because it has been that option-style offense. Jamias Griffin into Wolfpack territory, puts his shoulder down and picks up an extra four yards. And why not now? Why not now for Georgia Tech to start moving the ball on offense? I mean, your defense has done a relatively good job Every just keeping you in the game. But it seems like this offensive line is playing a little bit stronger, a little bit more effort by these tight ends and these wide receivers downfield. And a good run by Jemias Griffin. And Jemias Griffin's a guy, he was a Gatorade player of the year in high school in Georgia. True sophomore, got a lot of talent. Another this last couple this, of games, yeah, Griffin did with an injury, and it, the timing couldn't be better for Georgia Tech. Without Jameer Gibbs available in this game, game with a hamstring injury, they get Jamias Griffin back. Player on the field is Daniel Joseph, defensive end for the Wolfpack. Eric Woods on the field as well. What do you got, Ewood? Three running backs are stepping up for Georgia Tech tonight without Jameer Gibbs in the game. Griffin, Mason, and Dante Smith, number 28. 
And Tashard Choice, a former teammate of mine in Buffalo, is their running backs coach. When we talked to offensive coordinator Dave Patnode this week, he said Tashard Choice is a great blend of holding the guys accountable, but still being able to relate to them. And I give hit, I give Tashard a lot of credit in this day and age where everybody wants to transfer. They have four incredible running backs at Georgia Tech. None of them hit the transfer last week. He pulled, just pulled up without even being hit. It looked like a pretty bad hamstring situation, but you know, I echo that. Shard Choice has done a fantastic job, not only coaching, but getting these players to buy into this new Georgia Tech offense. Seven more yards for Jamias Griffin. Drake Thomas brings him down. But Georgia Tech really starting to run the football here at the end of the third quarter. Griffin comes up limping a little bit. Mason back in the game for the Jackets. Now Sims looking to pass. Play just wasn't there. He'll take what he can get, and that's a couple. It'll bring up a big third down for Georgia Tech. Yeah, it seems like NC State's done a good job of, of just disrupting the timing. You know, that was a quick three-step timing route on the outside that you know probably was an RPO situation. NC State's done a good job of disguising it and popping back out, taking away those routes. Yellow Jackets facing a big third down to keep this drive alive. They're down 10 as we head to the fourth quarter. NC State looking to finish up their season on a high note. Quarter, Mason on the carry, just powers his way to the first down. And the chippiness continues as words are passed between uh, Savion Jackson and left tackle Zach Quinney. It seems like that's an every play occurrence now. Yeah, this game's a little Sabian. chippy, and they're saving. And you know, interesting, you know, really, since the first half, we haven't seen much of a Lee McNeil. I know he kind of left the field with a potential injury, but haven't seen him back. And I think you know, Georgia Tech has realized that and started running the ball up the middle more of this game just because of Lee McNeil's absence. Well, here's another opportunity for Mason. Oh, and he just couldn't keep his feet. Great job coming over. Terrell Dawkins prevented what could have been a big gain. And Mason knows it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that body language right there, that means, oh, I almost had it. But he didn't. Good job by NC State. They shut out their opponent last week. Syracuse did not score in the fourth quarter. Again, they give to Mason. This time, nowhere to go. Calvin Hart Jr. coming in from that linebacker spot quickly to make the stop. There's a Lee McNeil back in the game. Can't miss him. Big boy heard me talking about him. He's like, I get back out there. Plus he's number 29, which I think is almost a better number for a defensive lineman than a single number. 29, yeah, it, it just it doesn't belong, but no. I think it does perfectly for a Lee McNeil. It Big works. third and six. Sims completes him a column. That'll be the first down. You've seen a lot of these Georgia Tech wide receivers that haven't gotten a lot of action so far this year. McCollum entered the game with only one catch. Targeted a couple times tonight. That was a big catch. Keep his team driving in the red zone. Now to the end zone. Over the top. Sanders just couldn't get a foot in bounds. No, it was really close, too. Good job by Sanders, high-pointing the ball. Battle, really good coverage, kind of forcing him towards the sidelines. Yep, and good call by the, by the officials. That right foot came down just outside that white line. Tech on the 10-yard line. Let's not forget this drive started on their own 10-yard line after a turnover on downs. Second and goal. Sims keeps it himself, and he'll lose a yard. Isaiah Moore there on the stop for the Wolfpack. Yeah, this that's will be the 15th play of this drive, Mark. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long drive, but that's a situation, you know, as a young quarterback, you think, okay, I'm outside the pocket, I can make something happen with my legs, but you know, the entire offensive play pulls the whole defense over there because it's kind of a, a rollout bootleg, so everyone's coming from the inside out. That one's the one you got to either throw away or try to take a shot to the end zone. Jerry Howard now 
Former fullback, former linebacker, now back to running back for Georgia Tech in the backfield, and we're going to get a timeout. timeout. Georgia Tech. First charge of this half. The yard line, their own 10 yard line. They worked it all the way to NC State's 10, now facing a third and goal from the 11. Sims with the handoff. Jamias Griffin just could, or Dante Smith rather, just could not escape that final tackler after a six yard gain, fourth down. Well, this play calling is, I mean, all points to the fact that they have no faith in their kicker and you know they understand that look we are a drive sustaining team it's going to take us a long time to score and get down the field we need to put seven points on the board but you know kind of going for a little draw play led me to believe they might go for it on fourth down but they're sending out their kicker interesting stewart. play call yeah stewart made one moments ago makes another one so two in a row for Georgia Tech in the kicking game. That's a big deal. Also, the season, we're underway here in the fourth quarter. We got a good one for you. Bam Knight tripped up before he gets to the 20. Big special teams play by Georgia Tech. Could get a late flag here. No, I haven't seen it come out yet. And maybe we won't get it. We've mentioned it before. This has gotten chippy here in the second half, and it continues on this kickoff play. I don't know what happened at the end of that. But he, he kind of, you know, looks like someone was celebrating the tackle and someone else flopped on the ground. I mean, look, we get up right here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Now, Massey was just like, get off of me. Like, he got yeah, up well, and all of a sudden he had a Wolfpack player in his grill. Yeah, you, he's trying to raise the roof and just raise his <laughs> raise NC the State player. player. <laughs> We'll pack up seven. Bailey Hawkins had a, another great game tonight. Can he keep the chains moving and keep the football away from Georgia Tech's offense? That is starting to hum. That's a good start right there. First down toss to Amezi. He is just a handful out there on the corners. Amari Walton has done a yeoman's job covering him tonight, but he's just so much bigger than Walton is. Yeah, and you know, he's a pretty big guy. Right, I was about to say, you know, he's, he's a 6'3", 180-pound corner, under 90-pound corner. It's just, you know, Mecca Amezi can body guys up. He's very, very strong hands as well, so he can catch the ball away from his body and it you know, creates an, you know, an even bigger target for his quarterback, Bailey Hawkman. Bam Knight picks up four yards. There's a look at Amezi. Coach said last year he just put too much pressure on himself having to replace Kelvin Harmon, who's now with Washington in the NFL, and, and they've had some great receivers come through this program. Second down and six. Person in the backfield, Hawkman will look to throw. Has time, has a receiver, and another great catch. That's Amezi showing he's got not only the size, but the wheels to get open and the hands to make a catch like that in traffic. Yeah, it's a good job. You know, Georgia Tech is not playing straight man-to-man. -man. I think with their depleted secondary and lack of pass rush, just aren't playing man, but Mecca Amezi's finding the soft spots in the zone. Knight just works his way for a pickup of about three. Yeah, look at look at Amezi. He understands that no one's running with him, so it's going to be a zone. He flattens out his corner out. Yeah, that's if it's man to man, you take that deeper. When you know it's zone, three high zone, you flatten it off, and so you know, it all plays together. And the defensive coverage recognition, route running, it allows him to get so many catches on the season. Now with pressure, Hockman steps up, tries to get it to Amezi, who was held. He was thought he was was calling for it. Pass interference, defense, number 24, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Keenan Johnson can't believe it. Let's take a look. Ill-advised jump by the defender, and you couldn't really tell on that angle, but maybe some restriction beforehand. It looks like it was relatively clean downfield, but Mezzi picked up a flag on that. Fresh set of downs. For Bailey Hockman and this NC State team. Hockman from the Atlanta area went to McEachern High School. I'm sure he's familiar with a lot of these players on this Georgia Tech team. 
Now going to the end zone. In the traffic and blocked, knocked down. Devin Carter was the intended receiver, but there's Tariq Carpenter to knock it down at the goal line. And we talk about you know, the size of the defensive backs for Georgia Tech. I mean, that's Tariq Carpenter. He's 6'4", 230, so he's going against a 6'4", 220 wide receiver. It is not very often that Devin Carter <laughs> is matched up pretty well size-wise with his defender. Good job by Carpenter to break that one up. Out to Bam Knight. In trouble in the backfield. Can he work his way back to the line of scrimmage? Cannot. Georgia Tech swarming on defense. Quez Jackson leading the way. Oh, they did swarm on that play. Just once Hockman turned and threw the ball, everybody on the defense flew to it. And Jeff Collins, it's his credit. He, he keeps on preaching this possibility and hope and work ethic and effort. And you know, this team now within striking distance, seven points. They know how big this third down play is. They can stop them here and force NC State to a punt. It would be really, really big for Georgia Tech. Coming with pressure. Hockman is flush. He'll go down. Curry got there. Along with Kyle Kennard, the true freshman on the outside. Uh, well, we saw this pressure early in the game with Curry just beating the guard up the middle. Great effort, pursuit from inside out, and Kyle Kennard, the big freshman, has already made a couple plays in this game. Great job of staying outside and staying disciplined, and this is what Georgia Tech defense needed to do. Give the ball back to your offense, and I mean, Georgia Tech has had two long scoring drives on their last two times out. Trenton Gill will stand with heels on his own 40. Punting it away to Josh Blancato. Fair catch. Blancato makes it at the 15. Georgia Tech will take over. From there, when we come back, Jackets down seven with the ball in the fourth. Tech has chipped away in the second half with a couple of field goals. Now down seven. And trying to continue the running game here in the second half. But the Wolfpack having none of it there on first down as Mason gets stolen for a one-yard loss. Yeah, and really this whole second half, it's, it's been Georgia Tech. I mean, Georgia Tech has had the ball pretty much the whole half. NC State's only had two possessions, come away with zero points in this second half. And remember, you know, NC State went for it on fourth down rather than a chip shot field goal before the half would have put them up by 10 rather than seven in this situation. Sims downfield has all kinds of time. Malachi Carter just couldn't bring it in with one arm. So a third and long. Yeah, kind of surprised Georgia Tech decided to do do that, take that shot downfield. They've been you know, so good in this half of staying ahead of the chains and you know, picking up little chunks here and there. But they have converted three third and long so far in this game. They hope to pick another one up on this drive. Yeah, 10, 10 of 17 overall. So they've been good on third down. Now Sims pressured out of the pocket. No chance to pick up the first down on that play. Calvin Hart Jr. with excellent coverage on P.J. Harris. And so what a three and out for Georgia Tech. Yeah, what a time for NC State's defense to rise up to the occasion. C.J. Clark at that you know, big tackle on first down, and that, I think that lost yardage play on, on first down Really put Georgia Tech in a pain. I couldn't, I couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Presley Harvin. <laughs> now, Presley Harvin averages punter. almost 48 a kick, but that, that's not a good punt. And Thayer Thomas has an opportunity for a good return, and he delivers one. We'll have a flag on the play. But Thomas has put NC State a great field position. There's my man. Presley Harvin, phenomenal punter. Let's check on this flag. And Dave Doran is unhappy. I think he feels like it must be against the Wolfpack. A 13-yard return from Thayer Thomas on the 45-yard punt would have set up NC State nicely, but now the officials meeting at midfield. Doran's pacing the sideline, letting them all hear it. 
There are two fouls on the play. During the play, one after the play. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, number 19, 15-yard penalty. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five on the kicking team, Georgia Tech. That's 15 yards, first down, North Carolina State. The penalties were marched off against both sides. The net result is a little bit of a loss for the Wolfpack. They'll start scrimmaging from their own 34, first and 10. 6.45 left to go in the game, up seven. And if you haven't been watching this game with us, it's been all Bailey Hockman throwing the football. You got to think Wolfpack would love to establish the running game here and run some clock. Hockman's going to throw, though, on first down. Chased out of the pocket in a dangerous pass, but hits his tight end. Angeline makes the catch and carries defenders and the football into Georgia Tech territory. Are you saying that carry, carry the defenders? I love the play on words, Chris. But good job by Billy Hawkman just with the arm strength to get it out there, fading off his back foot, and Angeline, big, reliable target. Big 17-yard pickup on first down, now trying to run it with Jordan Houston. Brought down by number 31, Kyle Kennard. Kyle Kennard on the stop. Gain of a yard, second down and nine. Clock winding towards six minutes left to go in this one. This Georgia Tech defense, I mean, they are absolutely decimated. They're, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the game, down their top four defensive ends, their top cornerback, the top nickelback, their safety. I mean, they got a lot of guys out, and they've been playing well, and no drive more important than this one right here at the end of the game. Hockman letting that play clock wind all the way down inside of five seconds, now chased out of the pocket. He's just going to have to throw this one away. And that mark at the start of this drive, you and I talked during the commercial break about the fact that NC State just has not gotten their running game going. 62 yards on 26 carries for the game. And when you want to burn clock in the fourth quarter, you can't afford incomplete passes like that. Yeah, and it's not like they don't have the guys to do it. You know, I mean, Ricky Persons, Bam Knight, both these guys, they really can, can do stuff impressive on the ground. And you would think in, in this drive situation, obviously not this play, you would try to run some clock. Need to pick up a first down, though, nine yards. Third down and nine from midfield. Tech bringing some pressure. It's picked up. Incomplete. And we get a late flag. Zamari Walton was defending on the play. And Emeka Mezzi, the intended receiver, and after the defense of the pass, the flags came flying. Defensive pass interference, number 21. That ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Uh, that's, a, that's a big call. And see the field's getting a little bit torn up. You see the dirt on the pads. Could have slipped a little bit on top of that route, but it's a big penalty for Georgia Tech. Eighth penalty in the second half against Georgia Tech, 12 for the game. First down, NC State Hockman. Pressure up the middle, gets rid of it though. Just too far for Mecca Mezzi. Let's take a look at that pass interference call. Look at the bottom of the screen, all the way at the bottom, outside of release by Mecki, and right there at the top of the route, you see the left arm of Zamari Walton just get under the shoulder pads of Mecca Mezzi, not able to come back to it. No doubt about that one, right, Mark? Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a good call, physical play, but that was definitely pass interference. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Hockman with time and a receiver. On the other side, that's Devin Carter. I mean, Carter 6'4", 216, Amezi 6'3", 220. It, 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 this is a slant route, but you see how we can start outside. A lot of smaller receivers can't do that because they can't work through the body of the defender. He stemmed that route to the outside and just swiped by the smaller defender. I mean, it, it's a it's a skill set that these receivers understand. They know it and they use it to their advantage. And no better example than that one by Devin Carter. And a fresh set of downs to work that clock, and Hawkman's doing just that. Now also getting closer to field goal range from the outstanding kicker, Christopher Dunn. Whistle on the play. 30-second charge timeout. NC State. 
That is their first timeout of this half. NC State calling a timeout to talk things over here with a fresh set of downs. Came downstairs, said hi, and went back and jumped on the trampoline. Looking forward to conversations with Jet in the years to come. Hockman continues to throw the football. Great catch at the 10. Incomplete. Boy, Amezi thought he had it. And you could hear it hit the bread basket. I guess when a football hits a big man like that, you're going to hear it all the way up here. But can he come up with it? Ah, nah, no. Nah, you nah, see nah, the ball nah. roll, too. Watch <laughs> it roll when he hits here, yep. right there. Hell of an effort. Oh, absolutely. You know, good, good job by the officials to see that. But, I mean, that's a difficult route for a guy that big to, to turn, to lay out. Good effort. Tech brings some pressure, but it's picked up. Meaning, they tried to go over the top. Carpenter was there in coverage along with Walton. Walton is going to sleep well on the plane ride home. <laughs> well, I mean, he is working today. So, so is Emeka Messi. I mean, they, it just seems like they're just, okay, where's 86? We're just going to throw him the ball, and hopefully we got either pass interference or a catch. But good job by Georgia Tech defensively. I mean, it's a third down. I wouldn't be surprised to see pressure on this third down. Force Bailey Hawkman to get the ball out of his hands quick. Another third down on this drive. Thomas in motion. Hawkman's going to try and run for it. Doesn't get the first down, but he's close. Eight yards on the carry. Now what are you going to do if you're Dave Doran on fourth and two? I think the first he, thing you do is probably let that clock run down as far as it possibly can, call a timeout, maybe, and talk things over. Although it looks like he's bringing in his field goal kicking unit. Yeah, and you know, Chris Dunn is two for three on 50 plus yarders. He had a 53 yarder at Virginia Tech, so. Could, yeah, this uh, one's going to be 39 yards, so certainly well within his range. Make it a two score game. problems for the junior from Lexington, North Carolina. Now the all-time leader in field goals made at NC State. And what a time to connect for Dunn. Look at that percentage, too, over 85%. The Wolfpack up. Gets a nice ovation from the fans that are in attendance at Carter Finley tonight. And a hug from his head coach, and that's a big field goal. Yeah, it's a big field goal. Yeah, you know, the game's not out of reach yet, but it's going to make it much, much more difficult for Georgia, this Georgia Tech offense that, you know, really their, their scoring drives have been really long scoring drives. They're not really a uh, big play offense, at least right now in this game. Good, monotonous drive, nine plays, 59 yards by this NC State offense. and. Did, did enough to get in field goal range, and Chris Dunn did the rest. Trenton Gill will kick off for the Wolfpack. Now up 10. With Dante Smith set to receive it. And Gill's done a nice job driving the football through the back of the end zone all night long. Smith will allow this one to touch back. And Georgia Tech is not a team that goes very quickly, but they're going to have to now in the remaining 3.31 here. Tonight at 11 o'clock, Eastern, the Huddle Quartet, Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and the coach, Mark Ricks. They'll be back with complete breakdowns of all six ACC games today. The Huddle, right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Sims from his own 25. Tech's going to have to move quickly. That's a good start. Sanders, again, is just having a breakout game tonight for the Jackets, 15 yards. A lot of it with those deep in cuts, and those will work well to pick up first downs during a two-minute drill, but you got to work outside at some point. Sims has all kinds of time. He can run it if he wants to. When he does, slides down after a minimal pickup on first down. 
Oh, it seems wanted to go deep. He saw Donica Sanders streaking down the left side of the field. Just didn't have the confidence to throw it out there. Good coverage by NC State on the back end. Wolfpack bringing just three, dropping everybody back in coverage. Sims is going to try and run. Now he gets rid of it and overthrows his tight end to Vaney. Third down for the Jackets, who are obviously in four down territory here. Yeah, and good job not taking the sack by Sims. But it's interesting, plays like that, you know, he, he does so much that's unscripted. But just that little flick past the tight end, as he progresses going to next year, those, are, those plays are going to become more accurate. And rather than resulting in incompletions or turnovers, it's going to be little dump offs for five and 10 yards that it's going to make a difference in, in Jeff Sims' game. Sims dumps it off to Mason. Makes the first man miss. Fumbles the football. Georgia Tech falls on it. Now let's see if that was it was clearly enough for the first down initially. But the ball went backwards after the fumble. Andrew he was able to fall on it. I think they're going to be I short. I think he's going to be a, a yard shy. Yeah, it was third and five from the Georgia Tech 40 five yard line so they needed to make midfield to pick that one up another player down for nc state this looks like it might be terrell dawkins he's being attended to by the staff checking out his ribs and hopefully he's all right nc state if they can get a w and hang on here tonight they'll finish eight and three on the year Coach Doran said he's going to give his team a week off. They've been grinding every single week now. Haven't had a game canceled or postponed all year. So they've played 11 games in 11 weeks. He'll give them a week off, and then they'll figure out what they're going to do bowl season as uh, we still have a lot of bowls this year, although some of them have been canceled because of COVID-19 concerns. Still a significant number of games, and you got to think at 8-3, and three, NC State's looking at a pretty good postseason opportunity. Yeah, let's see this fumble. Yep, right there, ball came out. So it was number five, Calvin Hart, who stripped that ball away. Jordan Williams getting Please himself taped up. Please reset the game clock to 2.34. 2.34 on the game clock. Thank you. Looks like quarterback read option to the top of the screen. That same unbalanced look again. Fourth down for the Jackets. Sims will roll sidearm it to his running back, and Dante Smith couldn't hang on, and now we get a late flag. Now let's check this flag. That was four down, so it would be, if it's a dead ball, it would be post-possession. Yeah, I think it's going to be taunting after the play. an incomplete pass the ball will go over on downs it'll be first down we do have a penalty on the play after the play was over we have a dead ball unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense number six that's his first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game it'll be nc state ball after we penalize the 15-yard penalty first down jakeen harris the guilty party They had it too. Yeah. That's a catch that Dante Smith is going to. Right there. You can't shake your moment. finger in someone's face. That's what they call it. I'm sure we'll get a healthy dose of person here. As the Wolfpack look to just run this clock, Georgia Tech with just two timeouts time on the board. Georgia Tech, that is their second of the half. They'll take one here. Don't forget the huddle's coming up next. They'll take you right up until kickoff of Miami and Duke. Our ACC Network primetime game presented by Geico. Georgia Tech had some chances, Mark, and they certainly kept this game close in the second half they were able to run the football successfully just could not quite 
get NC State off the field when they absolutely had to on a several third downs in the second half, and then they weren't able to convert on their, on their own. Yeah, no, and, and they weren't. And you know, George Steele, you know, they still got a shot in this game if they if they hold NC State without a first down here. They're they're going to get the ball back. But you know, you're right. Just, there have been opportunities in certain situations. Just haven't been able to capitalize, but. You know, only giving up 23 points with this many players down defensively. You know, it looks like it's going to be a loss, but st you know, still pretty impressive performance by the guys who had to fill in for the injured parties. Person just moving that pile. Georgia Tech calls their third and final timeout. Timeout. Georgia Tech. 30 second timeout. Final timeout of this half. You mentioned the players missing, Mark, on this team, especially on defense. They had 10 players unavailable today, and that's, you know, then you got to throw in earlier in the week, Antonius Clayton opting out the rest of the year, wants to take care of his, himself from a mental health perspective. Coach talked about that this week and how the team is so fully supporting him. And Clayton says he wants to come back stronger than ever next year starting defensive end Avery Shoel a backup safety who played a lot this year entering the transfer portal this past week so you know and then you got a player like Jordan Dominic who is the reigning ACC defensive lineman of the week unavailable today Trey Swilling unavailable Caleb Oliver Nickelback unavailable two other defensive ends Chico Bennett and Curtis Ryan's unavailable defense just decimated throw in your best tailback Jameer Gibbs with the hamstring injury suffered last week couldn't go Amarian Brown uh, your most explosive receiver hasn't been able to go for a few weeks <laughs> it's just it's the fact that they've been able to stay in this game is pretty remarkable but what uh, another thing that's remarkable too on third and one NC State picks up the first down and person with a big run to move the chains is NC State they were four and eight last year and this is Dave Dorn who had to over the last couple of years, replaced all but one member of his staff. He's got a new offensive coordinator. He replaced Coach Huxtable on the defensive side, keeping Tony Gibson, but giving him the keys to the defense. And to go eight and three this year, you got to tip your cap to Dave Dorn, the staff, and these players for the job they've done. Absolutely. And in just, you know, last year, only one ACC win. Obviously, well past that this season. and. I mean, you look at the importance of, of this game. They're not going to make the ACC championship game, championship game, but they're they're in prime pole position for a really good bowl game. And when we talked to Dave Dorian, he said, "You put us in one of those those Southern bowls, one of those Florida bowl games. We we, we can we can use that. We can use some sunshine." Uh, and so, um, really, after really the good win. bath on a night like tonight. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely right. Ball smiles for NC State, deservedly so, ending their regular season. And now, you know, they do get a little bit of a break. The team will take a week off before reevaluating and starting to think about postseason preparation. Yep. Subbing in some seniors, I think. <laughs> the lab game. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Get those seniors right. in, cause a delay of game. I'm sure Dave Dorn won't think twice about that. Yep, it is Liam senior Ryan. night today on Carter Finley. Yep. Ruccio, Thomas Ruccio came in at tight end. Liam Ryan came in at right guard. It really just, you can't say enough, too, about just what Dave Dorn has done. Remember, Bailey Hockman is their second option at quarterback, and he has been fantastic. Wouldn't be surprised if he pushes for that competition next year when Devin Lear is healthy. Wolfpack won't have to run another play. Coach Dorn with the fist pound. Coach Collins at midfield. Congratulations all around. Georgia Tech will take on Pitt at home on Thursday. So a short week for Coach Collins and the Yellow Jackets. And NC State, as we mentioned, finishing their regular season at eight and three overall. And looking forward to continuing their season in a bowl game.